Hello everyone. Quick accompanying video to explain this week's topic which is multiple activities and intents. Uh, intents are the mechanism that Android uses to start different screens or different activities in your app. Um, so if you haven't finished Chapter 2 Lab from Head First Android Development, please do that before you move on here. And before we get into this stuff of with multiple activities and tents, and intents, I want to raise something that, uh, some question that some of you may have had from Chapter 2. Okay, so in Chapter 2 labs where you were just learning how to build interactive apps, the Head First authors had you create the beer expert. And a question I get quite a bit is, what is the point of having this beer expert class that they have you make? Why not just have everything you need in findbeeractivity.java, right? It seems like the beer expert is just out there. It's just extra work. Um, yes, you could have everything in find beer activity. You, you could do that. Maybe you did do it, um, even though they, they asked you not to. But having this the code in the beer expert that you put there with the different flavor types and that's having to do with the colors, um, what, that's good design. Uh, but the question is, why? It seems like extra work. Well, you are going to find out in this chapter, but let's give you the answer. Okay? So Android recommends that you follow a design pattern. Now, design patterns have been around in software engineering probably since about the mid to late 80s, early 90s, when object orientation really, really took off. Um, so did design patterns. But, and, and I kind of misspeak here because the model view controller design pattern that we briefly touched on last time has been around since GUIs were first realized on the Xerox Alto. But um, design patterns are just a fancy way of organizing your code uh, or code modules or objects around one another in a sensible way. And there are very specific design patterns that you can use to solve problems that come up over and over and over again in software engineering. Uh, and one of those is the model view view model pattern. And it's called that because of the, its constituent parts. Okay, so the view just like in model view controller is the part of your code that shows something to the user it is the display so in android apps this is the layout in the second component is the view model the view model in android is your activity class okay so you have the view which is the layout xml file that sets the stage and then you have a view model and between the two is some sort of data binding, right? So data binding, like the text fields um, in your app, the data is shared tightly between these two. Button presses, the, the data that is transmitted between when a button is clicked is tight between these two. And they can go in either direction, right? The other thing here is that views and view models are inseparable. They are tightly coupled. They do not exist without one another in this case, okay? So you've got a view that displays things and you've got a view model that is responsible for updating the view. And then the final thing is the model. And that's what the beer expert is. Okay, the model is data. It's business logic. It's stuff that's not directly attached to the user interface. Okay, so this is model, view, view model, and it's a pattern. And it's not particular to Android. You can find s stuff that's very similar in iOS development, in native Windows development, native Mac OS development. It's just a term, right? But the idea is you got the presentation layer, the layer that kind of controls and interacts with that responds to user um, input, and then all the other business logic that can kind of live separately. So in the beer advisor, right, the view is your findbeeractivity.xml, and the view model is your findbeeractivity.java, right? These control the user interaction. The model is the beer expert, okay? So 
if you look at the beer expert, right, like the view model kind of depends on it, but it does not depend on the view model in any way. It is not tightly coupled to the view model. It's there more as a reference. The view model uses it, and it's got some good information. So, but why split this good information out from the view model? Well, the answer will become apparent in this chapter, but the reason is you can share this business logic with different views and view models or different activities in the case of Android. Right? So in chapter three, you're going to create an app with multiple activities in it, but you want to share between all those activities the concept of you know beer colors and descriptions and names. Right? Well, isn't it so much better to just maintain that list of beer colors and names and things like that in one place, which is the model, instead of keeping a list here and here and making sure that you keep them updated, you know, your list of colors is the same in here as it is in here, right? Why not just put them all, suck them out here so that they're shared, right? That's the idea. So this is kind of falls under the general heading of separation of concerns, which is very prevalent in computer science. You probably heard this term in your 331, your object-oriented programming class, in conjunction with information and encapsulation. But in general, software systems should strive to separate the presentation logic, the presentation layer, whatever that user interface is. And it's not not just in Android, but in, say, like web development, or if you're making ATM machines or point of sale systems. Separate the presentation layer and dealing with displaying and interacting with the user from business logic, right? The sort of general processing, general data handling that all computing systems have. All right, so going back to the issue of having multiple activities and intents. Most applications have multiple activities. They have multiple screens. Here's a screenshot from the Canvas app that we use at UNCW. Um, different screens. Each one of these screens is a different activity. So, but the question that we have now is, well, okay, how do I create different activities, multiple activities, and how do I tie them together? Because in your code that you've seen so far, you have never seen this, right? You have never seen a call to new, and that kind of like opens up the new activity you just defined. That just does not happen. Okay, so how do you get a new activity? Kind of know how to define them already. That's, that's not the hard part. But how do you launch a different activity? Well, the answer is in the concept called an intent. The Android intents are Android classes for starting activities and sharing data between activities. Okay. So, um, for example, if you're in the Canvas app and you tap on this button here, which is for CSC 315, Mobile Application Development, and you want it to start a new screen that perhaps shows you some details, like this one. You're here and you want to get here. How do you do that? First, you create an intent. It's a built-in class. You create a new one, the f and its constructor takes two parameters this, which is referring to the calling context, the calling activity, okay? because when an activity is started, it needs to know who who started me. Was, was it some other activity? What started me? And then course menu activity dot class. So this is an activity class. It is a dot class uh, type here. And this is what we call an explicit intent, which sounds like the name of a awesome like Bruce Willis movie, right, or Steven Seagal. Uh, this, what makes this as explicit is that you, the programmer, are saying, when you press this button, I want a very specific activity to start next. I want a new screen to come up next, and that's course menu activity. Okay? You can also send data to that new activity. So intent.putextra a string, course ID, and then a value. This is some variable value. Think of this as a dictionary, okay, or a map. The intent has a built-in map or a dictionary called an extra. It's called the extras, okay. So this is a key, a key as in a key value pair from a dictionary, a key, you can name it whatever you want, 
and then the value that goes along. And what happens is it gets packaged up in this intent object and it kind of goes through the nether because you will then call start activity with this intent. Start activity is a baked in inherited function for, or inherited method, excuse me, in the activity class. And what it does, and this is a really important point for you to understand, it basically asks Android, the operating system, hey, can you go look for this activity that was specified up here and start it up for me? Kind of like when the user on the home screen of their app pushed a button to launch your app, them pushing that button kind of said, hey, um, go find the explicit, go find this activity associated with this button and start it up and you got your home screen, right? Um, same thing here. You are asking Android, hey, go find this guy and start it for me, please. Okay. And Android will try and comply with you. Okay. But this is very different from like instantiating the, the new activity directly. There's no calls to new here. All right. So just a word about design here. Let's pause here for a second. Um, you know what? We'll skip that. We'll come back to that. Sorry, don't want to confuse you. Um, we'll come back to that at a later time. All right, that does not look good. Let me scrunch this up. There you go. So another kind of intent is what is called an action. Okay, and you, you have used actions on your phone. Um, actions are when you let the user choose which activity handles something. Right? So this is cool. Your app doesn't have to do everything. Sometimes it's nice to give the user a choice in which app they use, and then maybe you can use the result. So for example, sharing, right? Everybody's got the sharing button in their app. And when you click sharing, you get a list of things, uh, a list of different apps that can handle the concept of sharing, like a text messaging app, an email app might come up, Snapchat, Instagram might come up, if you click this icon. So what you're doing with an action, this is a term you need to know, is you're saying, hey, user, please pick the one of these things you want to start up to handle this. Uh, you may also like start up a camera so you don't have to code your own camera, start up a calendar app, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so um, you also use intents to realize these activities. Okay, so say you've got a picture here and you want to share it. So you click on the share button. Okay, in your code the user has clicked the share button. What are you going to do? you are going to instantiate a new intent, but instead of it being explicit and having a, a target class that's going to start, you are going to use this constant, intent.actionSend. Okay, this is, there's a whole bunch of these, action send, action camera, action call, action SMS, short message service, um, and these things are called implicit intents. The other ones were explicit because you're explicitly defining which class you want to start. These are implicit. You say, hey, I kind of want to send this picture to somebody else. Go ask, and here in the case of, excuse me, in the case of images, in our intent, we can set some information about it. This is a JPEG image, okay? And then we make a call. Let's go inside out first. Intent.createChooser with our intent, our share. It's a variable with an intent. And just a label. So what happens here? Intent.createChooser. You can see this is a static call. Android looks at the type of thing you want to share. And it sees, oh, this person wants to send it what type it is, and then it pulls up a list of other apps who are registered with the Android operating system to handle the sharing of JPEG images. Okay, so then the user picks one of these things, it comes back, so this whole intent.create user has evaluated and it's got a class in it, and then you start that activity. Okay, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. All right, so you will learn all about that in Chapter 3, in the lab for Chapter 3. Um, before you get into that, make sure that you have set up uh, the lab on setting up Git and GitHub for your homework, for your project. 
um, and setting up uh, things for how to commit those projects on your computer. Work on the lab for chapter three. And once you finish chapter three, you can do 90% of assignment number one. So get into it. Let me know what questions you have and good luck.